Hello and welcome to this Mobilytics video. I am your host for Caillou and in this one we are going to be taking a look at junglers that aren't played a lot but are actually still very good. Essentially not necessarily off meta junglers but underrated and underappreciated junglers that you should be using in solo queue at least on occasion. Now a lot of times the jungle meta is dictated by 3 to 5 champions that just supremely gank meta and therefore have better lane control, objective control, river control, you can't fight for scuttle crabs, you cry in tears of sadness, you sit in the corner of your room and you think what can I do differently? Maybe some of these champions can actually help because not always but in certain cases but they can be used in many situations as surprise pocket picks with decent win rates that can actually do a lot of work against meta junglers as well as impact lanes in a way that tilts them. And now while there isn't necessarily a particular order to this because each champion has its own strengths and weaknesses, I must start this off with Trundle. He still has such a low play rate. I don't know why, the buffs recently tipped him over the edge. And the Titanic Hydra changes that just came through in 10.5 are also helping him a lot. Trundle loves tank metas because that ultimate steals their stats, it makes him even more dangerous than he already is. His clear speed is good, his drilling potential is amazing, he's got a pillar that goes where you don't want it to, he's very hard to escape with his ice zone and he just noms you down. Decent damage, hard to kill, ADCs don't like him either, neither do tanks. Actually wins a lot of carry matchups 1v1 where he shouldn't and when you play him properly you can really be everywhere on the map with that W. You can definitely make sure someone bans him in the next lobby, I know I've banned him a few times already just when I don't want to see it. This PTA rune page really helps in their playstyle. Like Warwick and Rengar you must rush that tier mat for faster clears and then you can go into the Cinder Hulk and you'll see a lot of high elo players go into that disease convergence that has nice synergy with his ultimate as well as the rest of his kit that can peel as well as disrupt. But you can also have simple standard tank options like Spirit Visage, Randuin's Omen as you need as well as also going a Blood Razor build. However that is a more squishy build so I recommend it only for the most experienced troll masters. Now next up, as you all know if you've watched my channel whatsoever, you know I am an Orn main, however I do not play him in the mid or the top lane, I play him in the jungle. And even though his win rate in the jungle is still a lowly 42%, and in 10.5 he just received those nerfs to his levels for item spikes, as well as the brittle proc damage reduction, it shouldn't have affected his clear too much. Yes, it does hurt slightly because of the cap on damage to monsters with his W, so we did rely very heavily on the brittle for damage, but Orn's full clear was always very efficient and very fast for a tank, in fact for anyone really. And I did a balanced Orn jungle video featuring him specifically about a week ago, so you can head to my channel if you are interested in that. The link should be below. But the reason he does work in the jungle is because he provides you an immense amount of CC, his ganks are very underrated, and of course you have the ability to lane gank and side gank from a great distance with that ram. You know provided you're not a pro player that doesn't want to play him and you actually hit the ult. His dueling ability because you can buy if you want to keep on clearing you can buy a machete after getting 350 gold or if you want to go duel the enemy jungler maybe do a gank you can actually buy a ruby crystal for 400 gold and when you do that and maybe you upgrade to an early red smite and you want to go fight that least on a Kha'Zix you actually win 1v1 especially if you hit your combo and you get your aftershock proc they can't really damage through your tankiness and ultimately just being able to stay in the field for as long as possible with Orn once you have red and blue buffs and the fact that you can buy in the field is one of the most underrated things about Orn jungle. While the enemy jungler has to go back, you really don't. This means more uptime for ganking, more uptime for counter jungling, more uptime for vision control. But yes, he is significantly more harder to pull off than other tanks like a Maokai or a Nunu or a Zac, just because of the fact that his CC is skill shot based. But certainly it really seems like only me and LS have any sort of inclination to recommend this champion, he should have been picked up way more than he has. Yeah the item level spike are boosted to level 13 and 14 rather than level 12 and 13 like in the previous few patches. But a good red smite send a hulk with an iceborne gauntlet and abyssal mask are your core items. And while you can run a spellbook page which you will see, I don't really recommend it unless you are master plus, you know the champion and you understand how to use spellbook. I really do prefer even myself using aftershock. I feel like the stats really aid in your combat 1v1 in the river way more than a spellbook ever does. Right those are our core cool picks, now let's head on to some more niche things that you don't really see a lot but you should. Volibear, one of my mains also, however he's getting a big rework soon. Well not soon but in a couple months, so it's definitely one of the most underrated and I don't really understand why. His early and mid game power spike is absolutely obscene. Once you get Cinder Hulk and a little bit of HP that W really starts to chump. And if you've played Volibear, gotten fed and killed an ADC in the mid game, I guarantee you they've said what the hell is that damage please no Volibear too strong. Then again ADCs say that about anything so what do I know. Now the Cinder Hulk buffs are the reason that he is could have had a little bit of a spike because there's quite a few ways to proc it. 
His beefiness with the Cinder Hulk and Dead Man's Plate and Merc Treads really makes him quite difficult to deal with. Throwing that Spirit Visage as another item, you are going to be nigh unkillable, especially in this mid game phase. His clear isn't that great, but it's decent, but he more than makes up for that with his ganks just because you approach from the river, you use your E, they're going to be forced to flash out, and then you use your Q, flip them over your head, and you chump them down for the KS. Or, I mean, kill secured, of course. And when you're counter ganking or being counter ganked, his passive means you can last a lot longer and really deceive enemies and bait them into using things they don't really want to use on you just because they think they can kill the big bear, but you stroke your beard, you roar out loud, and you live. I always recommend him as a fundamental if you want to get to gold. And if you want to climb gold and plat with him to get to diamond, guess what? He's still very strong for that. His fall off really only happens quite heavily in diamond plus. So before we get the sex icon reworked Volibear, if you've seen those braids and the stature, it's absolutely mighty. Make sure you're getting the wins in LP with this version before the times change. Now next up is Poppy and she is definitely a champion that exists. And she exists with a lot of CC, an ultimate that really tilts Warwick mains, a W that actually frustrates anything with a dash, which apparently is every champion in the game. But most importantly, once she knocks you against the wall with the E, or just simply hits you with any of her abilities otherwise, damage that she dishes out is almost unnatural, such that her room page with the best win rate is actually electrocute. Obviously, you usually take grasp in the top lane, but that's not really useful in the jungle, and as such, you might as well make sure you have maximum damage on ganks, maximum damage on the skirmishes in the river. And oh, did I mention that she got her buffs in 10.5 if you didn't read the patch notes? Damage on the Q to non-champions was increased by quite a chunk, which means her clears now are going to be even better which is honestly where she could have a little bit of an issue. She can use this into hog buffs, and the reason she's very frustrating to deal with for lane is when she comes to gank, it's kind of like a Rengar. If you want to run to the bush, by all means, please do, I'm going to jump out and kill you. With Poppy, you can try the same thing, walk near a wall, see what happens. If you do, you die. If you try and dash, I throw up the bubble thing, and again, you die. And she doesn't really get beaten 1v1 as much in the top lane, so you can make up for her weaknesses in the jungle, and honestly, some people say she's better in the jungle currently than in the top lane. And given the last time I saw Poppy in the top lane, maybe this is actually true. For itemization, there are variations. Obviously, you can go standard, send a Hulk, Gargoyles, Adaptive Helm, Deadman, just full tank. However, it's kind of wasted when you have Electrocute. You can still go Warrior. You can go things like Trinity Force. If you're going to play this pick, I highly recommend just looking a bit at what kind of builds you want to go because with Poppy Jungle, you have versatility. And if you get fed and you're building damage, well, have fun is all I'm going to say. Next up, we have Shivana. And yes, she has the highest play rate, I think, of all the junglers in this video. But her AP build has finally caught on to a little bit of traction. It's been going for quite a while now, better than the AD variant. The reason for this is because she's one of the worst early game junglers regardless of what build you're going to go. However, the AP has such a lot of burst and surprising damage in the mid to late game that enemy squishies just sort of sit in the zone and get bursted out. No, it's not ideal for something that's meant to be a diving champion into the midst of five people and sort of burn you up like the old days. But at least she has a playstyle available to you in order to actually make it work. As such, you want to go the Harvest Rune page, you want to build Runic Echoes. In fact, that Nash's Tooth in the build has always been very good. Throw in the Death Cap and you're going to start to do some damage you didn't really expect. The CDR in their build really helping you throw out more Balls of Fire, which is really all a dragon wants from this life. And when you couple this with a good clear, good early root, because of the speed in which she does it, the damage that she will eventually dish out will be unexpected and give you that surprise factor, and that's something that's so important in solo queue. Now we must talk about Talon, and I know the Sai's are coming up because I'm sighing because I think he's a jungler already because of how much he shoved and roamed mid lane. He is one of the worst win rate junglers of all time, he had buffs to make him slightly better, yet out of all the champions that got those weird buffs to boost the damage to jungle monsters, he still sits at a nice 37 odd percent win rate. Very much his playstyle centers around doing the same thing you do in the mid lane, except this time you don't have to lane, you just get to roam a lot more. Which means the playstyle rewards a high risk, high reward factor, of course, but it rewards those who know how to play Talon and know how to path correctly. If you're not clearing efficiently, if you're not pathing correctly using his specific wall jump as well as regular jungle pathing, you're not going to get fed and therefore you will become useless. Because when the worst comes to worst with Talon in the mid lane, you at least have minions and XP rushing at your face. In the jungle, you don't have that, so if you don't execute the game plan properly, you're simply going to be another minion. To that end, you can really build him much like a Rengar, rushing that tier mat, not even building the jungle item out, and then building full on Lethality Assassin. At the same time, if you want a jungle item for better clear speeds and mana regeneration, you can of course do that. The Conqueror rune page does have decent success, but the Electrocute's a standard. I think if you're playing an Assassin jungler, you need to maximize your damage in ganks, you need to maximize your damage in 1v1s, don't mess around, 
get in, kill someone and get out. As always, with something like this, we do recommend practicing it a lot, going and seeing what one tricks are building and doing just to maximize the playstyle because it will take a little bit to sort of get the hang of. Next up, we have the Malphite, the Fox Drop Special. I used to do this myself as well back in the day, Tank Malphite. And to no one's surprise, he's completely awful pre-6. The AP build was of course nerfed, but you can still go the rock solid build and that will do a lot of damage in this meta, especially with Cinderhog buffs and all the armor you can build. After level 6, you become absolutely deadly and because people don't seem to understand the concept of playing around cooldowns in solo queue, just make sure you are farming efficiently as you can at least and then using the ultimate on repeat as quickly as possible. He does need farm, which is why he's probably the least viable on this particular list, but he's one of the few true one-shot champions in the game. Yes, we have Rengar, we know that, yes, we have Evelyn, but really, an AP Malphite, if you're still building that, our combo is just a dead person. So we've just talked about a rock, let's talk about the scorpion that lives underneath it, Skarna. Cinderhawk into Trinity Force has a very good win rate currently. He's really tanky but deals a lot of damage, thereby you can actually have a few variants where you skip the jungle item, go straight into Triforce or you build AD into Triforce, but you'll see the best win rate core items on your screen now. Ultimately, people forget this, but he's one of the best Sheen slash Trinity users in the game. Bad early game, but once you get two items, you take off. His farming can be very good with the nodes, and in fact, it's pretty good anyway. He can duel decently with quite a few junglers, especially if he has his zones activated. He's easy to pick up, easy to play. And remember, champions like Ramus, champions like Skarner that have an ability that literally forces the enemy ADC to build QSS or other champions to build QSS and Zhonya's, means you have such a good threat. Flash R, if they don't build it, means they die. If they do build QSS, then they delay their core atomization, which is of course what we want. His standardized room page is the Conqueror build. You can go Aftershock, you can go Predator. Honestly, in terms of the underused and underappreciated junglers on this list, he is the one that has the most diverse room pages and itemization choices. So if you like to have a champion that you can flex into different situations and different team comms, and you like tilting squishy targets, this is the guy to play. Next up here, I would love to say lost but not forgotten, but he's very much lost and forgotten. Ivern is just forever underrated and underplayed. He is the best support style jungler and the best friend of Rengar top laners. Usually he's much better in an ADC focused meta, but he's pretty good at uh, buffing tanks and bruises, makes them even harder to kill, they can batter people for even longer with their tankiness and sterics, gauges and such things. His ultimate with Daisy is so underrated, it's very strong, it chases you down, it knocks you up multiple times. His ganks are way better than you think. But ultimately, his playstyle is just so different, so unique, that while you don't necessarily need the most complex mechanics to pull it off, your decision making and understanding of how to use his specific pathing and playstyle to its fullest is radically different to any other jungler. He also has multiple types of room pages. You can use the airy page is still the most commonly used with the most decent win rate, most accessible. There are Hail of Blades variants that are actually doing very well. And the core optimization is of course Redemption, Athenes, as well as Moby Boots. You don't upgrade your jungle item, you just keep the talisman and you go do your thing while singing happy songs about honey and picnics. Finally, here we have Talia. One of the highest skill cap junglers in the game, almost always used in Master Tier Plus in Korea, also in EU West. We're talking really, actually not even Master Plus here, Grandmaster Challenger. You just don't really see it below that because it's very hard to get used to, but when it is played properly, when you have Challenger mechanics, Challenger jungle pathing knowledge, Challenger understanding of lane states, as well as enemy jungle matchups, basically you are now equipped to carry with Talia. You get ahead, she becomes an assassin. Farms very well after the first few clears and getting into that runic echoes, gets around the map quickly. If you can hit your W into E combo, that means 1v1s go your favor and ganks become basically free kills. Her damage spike essentially is through the roof because people not only are foregoing electrocute for Dark Harvest, but in an environment where junglers are generally safer from cheeses and invades because laners usually understand how to react to those things, it gives her a safety net in order to scale and exert her will on the map. Also, don't forget that ultimate is the ultimate gank potential. Cut them in half, zone them from dragons, zone them from barrets, help your sieges, get around the map quickly. It's hard to mess up, although somehow I've done it a few times. Ultimately, for like a year or so, she has been the most OP, not played jungler. Now for a bonus finish to this video, I was given permission to talk a little bit about my Zyra jungle. I stream it a lot, she's one of my main champions, even though I am a jungler. Her clear speed is weak, but once you scale, it becomes absolutely dominating. As such, I don't want to talk about Zyra, because I do love her, I do main her, and I do play her a lot. I want to plug the equivalent champion here that is actually way better for all of you, and that's Brand. More damage, better clears, Easier stun combo to use in ganks because it has much less travel time than a Zyra. You take a Dark Harvest page, you go Leandris, you go Rylai's and Runic Echoes, and you just become like a normal brand. 
And the fact of the matter is, when you do get invaded as a immobile mage jungler, which you will, trust me, you have a nice combo for disengage. Zyra, on the other hand, has a travel time on the E, it simply roots them. Bran can stun you and then burst you down before you can do anything else. And most importantly, even without his ultimate. However, if you do wish to try the Zyra jungle, it is good. It's just very, very weak pre 6, 7, 8. Once you get Runic Echoes, you can use it. Here's the room pages and itemization for her. Feel free to stop by the stream when I'm playing it and ask questions. Well, there you have it, a good comprehensive list of unique play styles from AP to AD to tank to fighter to whatever the hell Skana is. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Please do like, share and comment this Mobilitics video if you did. And of course, subscribe for all the great content they have lined up coming your way very shortly. I've been your host for Caillou and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.